Good afternoon, dreamers. It's Alexis from Dream Potion Pythons rocking a new hairstyle, which is a lot more efficient, and I love it. I'm going to just get up in the morning, and my hair is ready to go. So it's going to be a busy day, just me, for a couple more hours. Gray will be getting off work around 6, so we're going to get a lot of stuff prepared. Today is a very big feeding day. We're feeding all of our adults, feeding all of our babies. So I'm going to wait till he gets home so he can help me feed. We're probably going to record a lot of that feeding because our babies are ravenous and I have not really done any videos of them eating. It's really cute to see the babies eat so look forward to that later on in the video once we get everything thawed, everything set up. So um, some stuff I did this morning, I read a JKR Ball Street Journal article which all of his articles are really good. You could check out the website. Um, it was an article about um, some rookie mistakes that new and upcoming breeders go through and how to avoid those mistakes. So most of them are pretty easy to avoid, but one of them was really interesting to me because I think we can actually accomplish that. It was talking about finding a mentor to kind of help you and guide you along your journey to keep you on a straight and narrow, kind of get your projects focused and everything so you can have someone right by your side that's going to help you get into new projects because you know some of these large-scale breeders are working with things that are going to take years and years to trickle down to a smaller scale breeders because of the cost will be so high initially so there's a guy that lives in Nashville Tennessee we live in Clarksville so he's not very far away at all um, his name is uh, Michael we're actually looking forward to buying a snake from him pretty soon we're gonna get into some really new fun jeans. I'll put up a little picture, give you guys a little hint what we're trying to get into. So we're really excited about that. Um, I'll give you some more details about the breeder later, but um, I'm really excited about possibly kind of getting into a little, little connection with this guy. He's been breeding for 20 plus years. He's got the passion. He's got the drive. He has an awesome Instagram where he's posted just incredible snakes. He's got awesome clutches hatching all the time. So I'm really excited to kind of communicate with him a little bit more and see where he's coming from, where he's going, what's going to be his future plans. So I'm really excited about possibly getting into a little circle with him, maybe getting us to take us under his wing a little bit. So um, let's see. Oh, and also, since it's just going to be me for a little bit, I was going to give you some little fun facts about me, what I do uh, for work when I'm not dealing with my snakes and all of our other critters in the house. So I actually work at a doggy daycare. I've worked there for almost two years, and it's an amazing job. I love working with dogs. So it's just people bring their dogs there. I'm basically a doggy lifeguard. I watch them play, watch how they are socializing, making sure everyone's Staying in their lane, basically, making sure everybody's staying cool and calm, watching them, making sure they don't get into any scraps, making sure everybody's having fun, teaching them different things, because we have a lot of dogs that come in, they have no socialization whatsoever, or any sort of training, so we kind of help them get into a nice routine of just basic commands, basic training, teaching them the right and wrong ways to socialize with dogs. And so working with dogs at the doggy daycare has really boosted me into different avenues because when I was working there, I loved being with all the dogs so often and I knew that eventually I would um, leave that job. And so I wanted to have pictures of all the dogs I've been caring for every single day so I'd still have my memories of them. So I invested in a very nice camera, which I've been using to take pictures of the snakes. But before I started taking pictures of the snakes, I started taking pictures of the dogs at the daycare and I've gotten some amazing shots. I'm going to put those up for you or show them to you on my computer because they are absolutely gorgeous pictures of these dogs and I love them so much. Which kind of brings me to another point which I really um, enjoy is just all of you guys that have pets out there make sure you take tons of pictures, tons of videos of those pets because you don't know what's going to happen in your life because you know our pets don't live as long as we do. We have to really cherish our moments with them for as long as we can because they just don't they're not going to be with us very long and when they're gone it's just completely devastating And when you have those pictures and memories that you can fall back on it's really helpful once they do finally pass on 
because um, a long time ago when I was in the seventh grade, I was running track that year in middle school. My uh, parents were picking me up from a track meet, or not a track meet, just track practice. I was still at school. And so it was weird. My mom usually picked me up, but it was my mom and dad. So I was like, why are you here, dad? Why, why are you picking me up too? And so they're like, we kind of have some bad news for you. And I was like, what? What's going on? And they're like, we had a house fire and uh, all of our stuff is kind of gone. I was like, you guys are joking. You guys are lying. That doesn't make sense. Like, I was just at the house a couple hours ago. It's, it's fine. And so they pulled out their phone, showed me the video of it, and everything was just black and smoke and water dripping from the ceiling from the fire department putting out the fire. So when I finally got home, it like sank in. Everything was just destroyed from the smoke, from the water. We got small things that were salvageable, but most of our pictures of our dog, Hossie, were on a computer. And so that computer was just completely gone. So most of our pictures of our dog, we don't have anymore because they were lost in the fire. So we still have little bits of pictures that we still have, but we've lost a large majority of it. And it really stinks since he's not with us anymore. So I really loved having that option to take pictures of people's dogs and send them those pictures so if anything happens to their photo library anything happens to whatever format they have their pictures in they'll still have something from me that i can send to them because unfortunately we have had dogs that have passed away at the at where i work at the doggy daycare just from old age or from um, strange diseases that have come out of nowhere um, tumors on hearts all sorts of strange things that have unfortunately taken our pups away and I loved being able to have pictures of them playing in daycare, having fun, playing with their friends, snuggling with us, and being able to give those pictures to the owners so they could still have those memories of them playing since so many people have been coming to our daycare for years and years and years. So they're a big part of our lives as well. And so when they finally pass, it's a big hit to all of us because we've been taking care of them. They've been bringing them to us for so long. So it's really nice to be able to give that back to people. If I could figure out how to kind of do that as a side business, taking pictures of people's pets, dogs, cats, uh, reptiles, whatever anyone has. I would love to do that because I just love taking pictures of people's pets and them having those memories. So when they're gone, they'll have that um, memory to fall back on. Because recovering after uh, a loss of a pet is really rough. But um, that's some little fun facts about me. But like I said, we have a busy day today. So let's go set up some rats clean some tubs, get everything ready so when Greg comes home we can feed these snakes. Let's get this rat buffet started. Okay, rat buffet is set up. Oh wait, I forgot about the mice. Okay, rat and mouse buffet set up. That is good stuff right there. So let's get ready to clean some tubs. Alright, let's clean some tubs. Cleaning is done, so let's give you a little update on some of these babies. They've been growing a bit, and they are just really coming into their colors, so they're looking really good. Still pretty feisty, but still looking good. Gray just pulled in, so let's see what he's up to. Hey Gray, how's your day? 
you know, it was it was long, <laughs> like always. You ready to feed some snakes? I suppose so. Probably overdue. <laughs> Probably overdue. <laughs> Alright guys, so I've been home for a couple of hours now, Alexis and I are getting ready to feed these snakes. Had to chill for a little bit, my job absolutely wears me out when I have to be there all day. But, I know we got some hungry snakes, I'm going to try to get you guys a couple cool slow-mo shots and have a good time with this, so let's go! We finally got done feeding everybody. I fed the babies two mice this time, so they're growing really fast. They're little eating machines. We're really excited to have them all eating finally and eating a lot. Our big guys have been ravenous forever, so we're really excited to get them getting bigger and growing because we should have a lot of up and coming breeders soon. So we've got a lot of plans for them in the future. Um, I think that's about it. So we're going to wrap up this video. Thank all of you guys for coming out and watching us. Um, we've got all the babies up on Morph Market right now. I've been updating their pictures, taking tons of pictures of the baby. So definitely go out and check our Morph Market. Everyone's available. So if you're interested, send us a little message. Um, I think that's it. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the night.